There's uh, John and Graham in the background. We're on top of the summit of uh, Bryn Llys. 519 metres on the OS map. So I'll give you a 360 degree panorama of all the frost and the snow and then I'll go up and surprise them and see if they've got anything to, uh, to say to the camera. So uh, this is one of the um, outlying uh, ridges of the Bardwin. goes down to uh, Cunwid and uh, in the background there we're looking uh, north and uh, the A5 is down in the valley and um, coming into the background now should be the ruin of Liberty Hall and we had three people there only just a few minutes ago they um, came up the track and uh, they stayed on the summit oh well not actually the summit but they stayed by the ruin of Liberty Hall for half an hour or so so you got the higher Berwyn somewhere in the background it's uh, rather gr grey and murky. Cloud base is um, over 2,000 foot though, that, uh, and obviously that helps. And we've um, surveyed the col, and now we're on top of the summit, so uh, that's enough of me for now, and um, I'll just turn the viewer around, and then I can go back up and see John and Graham, and we'll have a little chat about what we've done uh, up here because uh, Brindley says uh, two potential high points that vie for the summit position and uh, the first one we came across and we looked over towards the, the one where the GPS is on behind me and um, I think we all thought that we were on actually we were actually on the highest highest point and we weren't so again that's where the leveling comes into its own so I'll just um, go up now and uh, see what they have to say. <coughs> Are you hiding? <laughs> and they've both, they've both disappeared. <coughs> John's done a runner. <coughs> well, here's uh, Graham. Um, <coughs> John's actually um, gone for a saunter down to the down to the col because um, because he's cold. He's a softy. <laughs> <laughs> now we we got a little um, thermometer here, haven't we, Graham? We have, and it <coughs> keeps falling. It's minus point six. Minus point six, is it? Yep. Now it's it's um, if I just wind speed is about um, four miles, five miles an hour. Now it's. It's hanging up and it's actually upside down, but you can see there minus point six, and there's very little um, wind speed, is, isn't there? Which yeah, is <coughs> very very gentle breeze. Which um, we're ever so lucky, really. And so we've come up here now. Behind Graham, I was just um, talking before that um, there is another high point, isn't there, of this hill? Yeah, it's um, just um, just over there beneath um, beneath Molsona. And um, I think we, uh, well, we, we levelled, didn't we, from one to the other? We did, yeah. To work out the uh, vertical height difference, and that was about... 17 centimetres. 17 centimetres. So the GPS, which is um, just to the left of, uh, of Graham, uh, that's set up on the highest point. And again, we, we did a little digi camcorder clip of us on the bulk. So uh, we had an hour worth of data there. We did, and we've got um, another... 20 minutes to go. So is the um, is the time that it's been gathering data actually up on the keypad screen now? Yeah, just here, moving. Let's just yeah, have a look. See the number there, 40.09. So it's been one. going for 40 minutes. 40 minutes. So we've got about 20 minutes. Um, 20 minutes left, and uh, I know that uh, the last sort of 40 odd minutes since we've come up to the summit, I've started to feel the cold a little bit, and <laughs> this is why. John suddenly disappeared. He's gone for a saunter to build up his body heat. And uh, it's obviously, obviously not a day that uh, you want to hang, hang around, even on summits of this height, for too long. No, it's not at all. Um, you, you begin to learn about uh, things like exposure, don't you, and <laughs> how to preserve heat, um, and what sort of clothing you need to be able to stay out in this, these sort of conditions. And certainly when you stop moving, you 
not surprisingly, you lose heat very, very quickly indeed. So, do you fancy, um, Graham, giving us, giving us a sort of um, just a, a little talk about uh, what makes up uh, the GPS differential equi equipment? Yeah. Yeah? So, if you sort of just point to, shall we start from the top? <coughs> well, up here we've got the antenna. Um, what that is doing is receiving radio signals from the satellites in the sky and it's converting those radio signals into electrical current which comes down the wire and into the what is essentially a little computer device in the in the rucksack which takes the um, the electrical currents turns them into um, uh, digital data which is stored on a compact flash card and the unit is controlled by the red keypad here which lets you put in commands um, to um, to control the uh, the equipment so yeah so basically you've got receiver control pad or keyboard and computer if you want to put it in simple terms the, the, the three components and of course it's all, um, the antennae dish is on a fixed length pole that is um, usually set at two metres. Uh, um, it's two metres there, yes, which comprises two one metre um, poles, which we have measured and they are exactly one metre. So you can either, with this setup, you can either have it on one metre's length of pole or, or two, two metres length, whichever you choose. Um, clearly if it's very windy, um, then you're going to want the, um, the the unit as low as possible to um, so that its centre of gravity is low down and it's not going to blow over. Um, if the conditions are calm like today, then you really want it as high as possible so people walking around don't interfere with the uh, reception of the signal. Now, there's quite a bit of weight involved with it all, isn't there? I know when you um, when you go out surveying, it's normally uh, John that's uh, carrying the staff and the two-metre pole, as well as the optics, which are held safely yeah, in, a, in a box in his rucksack. That, that, that's right, yeah. Uh, yeah. Now, you've normally got the GPS uh, rucksack, which is quite heavy within your rucksack. Yes. And, um, and then I, there are two very, very light tripods that you carry. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, I normally volunteer myself, except for the, um, uh, the, 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 the couple of visits up to Scotland that we did last you were the Monroe Society, the, the, the obviously you're dealing with higher mountains there and the thought of carrying any substantial weight up those, I, I, was, I was last to arrive on the summit anyway. So thankfully somebody volunteered for tripod carrying duties. You just enjoyed watching Peter Willingbot, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but today we, we've carried two tripods up with us, haven't we? Because that... that well, you have, you carry them. <laughs> that, that saves time to an extent, doesn't it? Especially when you have to flag out either the summit or the bulk mm. to find out the exact true point. Um, you can set the GPS up to gather data, which we did at the bulk for an hour. We did, that's right. And at that sa same time as that was gathering data with the other tripod, with the optics and the staff and the level, um, we did um, li a line survey to work out where the, where the proper bulk was. That's right, yeah, we set up a grid of um, flags <coughs> and found the highest point. And had that not coincided with where we'd set up the GPS, then we would have um, done a, a height difference between the true bulk position and where we'd set up the GPS. As it turned out, by good fortune, we'd set it up on exactly the right point. And of course, when we've again um, stored all the uh, all the data that we gathered, dismantled the uh, the equipment, and came up to the summit, there's literally just two points here. And we, we looked around for about half an hour or so, didn't we? Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, as you've panned around more than you can see it's quite an undulating um, summit um, you look over there in the distance about 300 meters away and there's um, there's a, a rise in the ground there's a, a little summit here about 50 meters away there's another little summit here about 50 meters away um, but um, the two close contenders are where we've set up the GPS here which is the true summit um, and then this little knoll over here, which is actually 17 centimetres lower. Yeah, well, cheers for um, giving us the uh, the once-over of the machine, uh, of the uh, uh, the machine, the Leica GPS equipment, Greg. Well, it was a bit simple, but... <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, we've got about another 30 minutes uh, of data to gather. Yeah, and so uh, we'll, cheers. And I'll, if we're I'll... never seen again, we froze to death on the summit. <laughs> OK, cheers, Greg. Cheers. OK, so the results of Brinthlease 
If you look at the OS maps, they give figures of 519 metres for the Bulch and 549 metres for the summit, which is exactly 30 metres of prominence. Now our measurements, the survey for the Bulk are 516.07 metres and the summit height 547.81 metres. So the difference there is 31.7 metres, so actually 1.7 metres higher in provenance than the Ordnance Survey map suggests, so that makes it a safe jury.